Hi to those of you who are joining us. Um, we've got a few people with us already. Uh, we're just going to give it a few minutes and uh, wait until we've got a, a good number of people and then we'll sort of start properly. But just what I'm saying to people as they're arriving is that um, over the course of the next half an hour, we hope we'll get some, some questions for, for the panellists here about pastoral support and, and, and careers guidance. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, you'll see there's a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And if you use that just to, to pop a question in, and we'll get through as many as we can. So any point between now and half past eight, do feel free to, uh, to ask a question. I have got one question in already asking if, if it's saying that, that um, if I'm, I'm echoing. I don't know if other panelists can confirm whether they can hear me okay. I can hear you okay. Yeah, sounds all right here. Okay, so apologies to whoever asked the question, but um, hopefully it'll settle down a little bit as we get going. Okay, it's a couple of minutes past eight and uh, nobody's joined us in the last few seconds. So I think we'll, uh, we'll make a start now. And if I, uh, if I repeat my sort of uh, welcome then, I'm sure you won't mind. Um, thanks for joining us. This is the, the Q&A's uh, Pastoral Support and Careers Guidance webinar. My name is Marion Baker. I'm Assistant Principal at the college. And my responsibility really is to uh, look after <coughs> aspects of student support, um, such as uh, student well-being and progression and so on. Um, just as a brief introduction, I think the approach we take as a college is that we've, we've got three really important jobs to do. One, obviously, is, is to get students, you know, great results and, and, and make them enjoy the courses they're doing. And, and you'd have gone, I'm, I'm sure, to some subject sessions where you'd have, you'd have found out about how that goes on in the classroom. But the other two, the other two roles that we've got are one, to look after people, make sure that they're safe, that they're happy and that they, they develop. And the other one is to make sure the students progress on to really exciting, rewarding destinations. And it's those two functions that I think we're able to talk about um, this evening. So what I thought I'd do just to, to start off is to um, introduce my colleagues just very briefly. I'll just uh, uh, let you know their, their roles. And then, then some of them will be talking to you um, about their particular role a little bit more. Um, so uh, we've got with us tonight two of our guidance directors, that's Al Norman and Caroline Gell. And yeah. Caroline will talk a little bit more in a minute about, about what a guidance director does. Um, we've got uh, Emma Bloxham and Lucy Stevenson, who will talk to us uh, about the role of progress tutors. They're two of a, of a larger team of progress tutors. Uh, and we've got Alice At Atkinson, who's our careers lead. And she's one of, uh, of three staff that work within the careers area of the college. Uh, and she will talk to us a bit about uh, the career support that we give for applying to university and um, other other destinations as well. So if I hand over first of all to uh, Caroline who will say a little bit about the work of, of the guidance director. Okay so good evening everybody. Um, so Al and I are guidance directors at QE. There are three guidance directors um, in total. We liken our role a little bit to ahead of year. We work really closely with the, the progress tutors at QE and I, I often sort of say to, to students that we're an additional layer of support. Um, our jobs day in, day out, are to support, to guide students and to sort of monitor and look after students' well-being. Um, we're here to support students, um, as I say, on a daily basis, whether that be in terms of their programmes of study, uh, their subjects, 
their progression, their learning, um, or whether it may be more sort of personal issues to that individual and their perhaps barriers or hurdles to progress and to their success. Um, as guidance directors, we have strong lines of communication with um, staff, subject staff, the learning support team, careers, um, and also sort of uh, support within college, perhaps sort of uh, the college counsellor and also external um, agencies. I think I would agree that, you know, we work to ensure that our students um, are happy that they're committed, that they are motivated, that they feel supported, that they feel that they can approach us if they have a worry, that they have an anxiety, that they have an issue that they feel is preventing them from getting their, the most out of, out of their time at QE. And, and ultimately, we want all of our students to look back at their time at the QE like the two years and think that they had a great time, that they really enjoyed it, that they were successful and, and importantly, that they felt supported um, throughout their time. So, you know, it, on a daily basis, we're there for students, but we want to make sure that at the end of the two years, they, they enjoy, they've enjoyed the two years and that they've, um, they've succeeded and that they've, they've fulfilled their potential. Thanks, Caroline. <laughs> Caroline, as I say, is one of the directors, um, and uh, Al will, I'm sure, uh, um, be able to, to, to join him in, this, in a little bit as well. Um, Lucy, I think you're going to say something about the, the work of, of progress users. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you uh, for joining our webinar. Um, I'm a one of part of a team of 11 progress tutors here in QE. And I suppose the easiest way to describe us is similar to a form tutor at school. Um, our role is a little bit more complicated than that. Um, we support you over the two years that you're actually with us here at QE. And really, we are your advocate, your, the person that you would come to in college um, for any support and guidance that you would need. We work with you both academically to support and motivate and challenge you to do well in your subjects. Um, but we also support your, your well-being, like Caroline said, your, you know, if you've got any anxieties, any kind of difficulties with your learning that you might need support with, we can help you with that as well. So alongside all of that support, we deliver um, a tutorial program to you as part of the tutorial system. Initially, that is all about getting the student, getting you settled into QE. Um, it's very diff different when you come to us. It's different to school. It's a different environment. It's a different way of learning and it's possibly different subjects that you're studying. So those first few weeks, a couple of months is all about us getting you used to that way of working, how to be an A-level student, how to organize your day, your files, your work, your notes, how to kind of organize yourself to be successful. Um, alongside that, we look at planning for your progression. Like Caroline said, our ultimate aim is for you to be successful and to move on to that next step in your kind of learning journey in life. So we will help prepare you for university, for careers, for whatever it is that you might want to do. And we also touch on issues such as safeguarding British values as part of the tutorial programme. But ultimately, ours is a role of support and um, support for you to make sure you have the best time with your subjects, but also in college, getting you involved in clubs, in societies that are going to help you kind of grow and um, develop your personal well-being as well as your academic well-being. Great. Thanks, Lucy. And Emma, as I say, is also a progress tutor, so we will no doubt hear from, from her too a little bit later. And Alice, would you like to say something um, about the, the work of the careers team? Absolutely. So my name's Alice. I'm one of the careers advisors here at the college. It's myself and Liz Bryan um, and our colleague Sarah Griffiths, who is our work experience and raising aspirations coordinator. So the work that we do is very specialist. It's all about your progression. So whether that's going to university or perhaps looking for a higher or degree level apprenticeship, we do a lot of initiatives and a lot of engagement in in addition to all of our one-to-one -one careers advice and guidance interviews that we offer. So this is impartial advice and guidance, and it's really to help you with whatever decisions you need to make about your future and career. 
So that could be looking at subject choices. It could be looking at your university application in detail. Um, it could be that you want some information about engineering. So you might join one of our initiatives like Future Engineers, or perhaps you want to join the Medic Society, which we run as well. Um, so we do quite a lot of programmes and we do an awful lot of one-to-one -one careers guidance interviews with students. You can access the career service as many times as you want during college. You can self-refer or you can ask um, for help from your guidance director or progress tutor to refer you for a careers appointment. Um, and it's really, it's a service that anybody can access at any time during their journey at QE. That's great. Thank you, Alice, and thanks, thanks all of you. So what we want to do, I think, is to use the, the, the rest of the time that's available to us to, to answer any questions that you have. Um, so we've had a couple of questions in already. Please feel free to, to keep asking those uh, as, we, as we're answering others. As I said earlier, the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen is, is the way to put those questions in. We've also had some questions that have cropped up in, in other seminars, and other webinars rather, um, about careers and about um, about uh, how we support students, so um, we can uh, we can address those as well. So, um, can I start with a, a very general one, which I think you know could go to anybody really, which is um, uh, from an attending. My son has has no idea what he wants to do. Only that he wants to to do A levels at QE. Where do we start? Um, Al, would you like to, to to start off on that one, and then and perhaps uh, Alice can join in uh, in a moment. Is that okay? Great, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a question we often get. Um, I don't think many 16 year olds um, know exactly what they want to do in life. Some of them do, um, but quite a lot, of them are, a lot of them are in the same position. Um, first thing to do is obviously come to these open events to, to take part in them and find out about all the subjects that we offer. We have a, a huge number of courses, much more than you'd find in, in a school. Uh, bigger than the choice they had for options in year nine, year 10, 11. Uh, so there'll be some that they don't really know about. So coming to these evenings is a, is a great way to start finding out. There's also a lot of information on our website now uh, about different courses. We've expanded that greatly uh, over the last year. So there are leaflets about the courses. There are sort of samples of different lesson activities and so on. So you get a really good impression as to what the, the subject is about and what it would be like to study it. Within the, the website, you've also got links to, to email uh, the course leaders or the staff who work on particular courses. So that's another good way to raise particular questions <laughs> if you've got a question about a subject that you're, you're not familiar with, but you'd like to know more about it. So the website's a good place to go. Um, another event that we, that we run every year is what we call Bridging. So in the summertime after the, the GCSE exam season, uh, applicants have got another chance to, to find out about subjects by sampling lessons in, in a range of subjects that are sort of on their shortlist, if you like. So across the whole journey, sort of from now through till uh, June, July, uh, there's lots of opportunities to find out, to experience different things, to really test out different subjects and see what works for you. And all the way through that, there's lots of guidance and help from people like ourselves, uh, from people who might be interviewing you uh, at the college or by phone or whatever uh, through that journey. OK, hope that's all right. Thanks, Al. So that's that's a, a good insight into the kind of the information that's out there and, and the support that we can give to help people make decisions. Alice, do you want to sort of get, get, join in with perhaps what, you know, what the stakes are in choosing subjects, how, how, how important it is and... and and, and how doors can be sort of closed or kept open or whatever. Absolutely. So in terms of choosing subjects, we always say to students to listen to what your teachers are saying to you now at school about what your strengths are and what your interests are as well. It's a very important balance between your, what you're good at and what you're actually interested in doing, because you kind of need a combination of both of those things when you come to A-level, because it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a challenging step up to the next level of your education. So you need to be interested so that you're motivated to do the extra work. And you also need to have um, a bit of a talent for what you're doing anyway. It's always a good thing to pursue your interests because with A-levels, because you choose three subjects, there are many doors still left open to you regardless of the combination of subjects that you select. If, however, you do have a very clear ambition or goal in mind, start off by looking at the UCAS website or looking at prospects at job profiles to see what qualifications you might need. 
So say, for example, if you desperately want to become an engineer, it's useful to have maths. So there are certain career paths where you can actually look up what it is you want to do, figure out then from that what A-levels you should be selecting. There are also some subjects called facilitating subjects. You can actually uh, look up a guide on facilitating subjects on the Russell Group website. And that's actually a really useful document for um, people in year 11. It's aimed at students who are about to select their A-levels. And that's something that's quite good to actually just search online and read through together. Um, so my advice really is pick the things that you are good at and you're gonna be motivated to study. Um, and then we would probably then look at what careers are related mm -hmm. to that. But if you do have a clear goal, select the right subjects by looking further down the line and what universities want from you, if it's universities um, that you would be applying to. Great. Thanks, both of you. And I think the general principle is, you know, as Alice says, for a small number of students, yes, with career plans that are very precise, yeah, the, the choice matters. But, you know, for most of our students, the important thing is, is to do what you love, as Alice has said, find out as much about those, those courses that perhaps you're not, you're not familiar with from school, as Al was explaining, you know, do what you love. And it's the grades that open the doors rather than the individual subjects. So what you enjoy, you will do best at. And, um, and that's the way to, to do well. I mean, there's a question related to that, which we have here, which is, can students apply to, to, to attend QE not knowing what they would like to study? And um, I'll just deal with that one very quickly because the answer is absolutely yes. And in fact, what we like to do over the, the course of the application period is to, um, is, is to help students make those choices. So absolutely don't feel that you need to know exactly what you want to do at the point at which you apply. We do ask you, we ask you what you're interested in. Uh, we ask you to give an indication of the subjects that you think you might want to do, but we don't hold you to those at all. And you have, you know, as Al's explained, various points throughout the year to, to change your mind and to refine your choice. So if you're coming to us as a blank piece of paper, that's fine, that's brilliant. If you're coming to us knowing exactly what you want to do, that's also brilliant. And anywhere in between is fine too. Okay, thank you. Um, got a question here about um, support for UCAS applications. So about 70% of our students progress directly onto university um, and, and therefore, you know, our work supporting UCAS is a big part of the job. Progress duties play a big part in that. So, uh, and we're right in the middle of it at the moment, aren't we? So, uh, Emily, would you like to say a little bit about how, how we support uh, the UCAS yeah. project? I might bring Emily. Hi everyone. Um, so, like Marion said, quite a lot of our students do actually progress onto university after QE. Um, so, with that in mind, our support actually starts within the second term of your first year. It's really important to start researching courses that you are interested in. There are thousands of different options available to you. So, we do start the research early. We research universities that you might be interested in going into. Um, if you're not sure, then as your progress tutor, we would suggest that you do speak to one of the HE and careers advisors, Alice or Liz, and then they can help you narrow down your options. Once you've registered for UCAS when that's open, which is usually around about May, your progress tutor does help you fill in every section of the application. So you'll have to write a personal statement and Lucy and I are both going through our students' personal statements at the moment, where we work very closely, helping them write their personal statements, getting it correct, um, and filling in every part of their application before we do send it off. It is a process where you're not alone and you do spend a lot of time working with your progress tutor, especially in the first term of your second year, getting that complete. Um, so yeah, you are extremely well supported um, by progress tutors also by careers um, and your subject staff who will also consult with you about writing that personal statement, which is the most important part of your UCAS application. Yeah, that's a good point actually, that you know everybody here really plays a part in the, in the UCAS process. Progress tutors do, do the bulk of that support. Um, Alice, obviously um, the careers team are, are also involved. Do you want to, do you want to add anything to, uh, to what Emma was saying about uh, our role? Yeah, absolutely. So, um... Before any application is sent off, it is approved and checked by several people within the college. So there are multiple stages to the checking process that we do. Um, it's basically so that we can make sure that you're applying to the right universities and courses, um, that your statement matches up to what you're applying to. And that's often where um, Liz or I will look at your application. We might read your statement and you might be applying for a course, but you might not be aware that there's a course that might be better suited to you. So we might highlight that and have a careers interview with you at that stage. 
Um, we do an awful lot of um, personal statement drop-ins and um, we do a lot of stuff virtually as well. So students email us their statements all the time and we provide notes constantly. Um, obviously you'll get a reference from the college as well um, and your progress tutor will write that and they're always fantastic references. Um, and our students progress on to it, some really interesting and very different types of degree courses because there's so many different courses here at QE um, and there's so many possibilities beyond college as well. Um, it's really fascinating to see the different types of um, university degrees that our students go on to do. Um, and it is very inspiring to see last year over 800 students progressing into higher education. Yeah, a record for us, we think. But not, not all our students uh, go on to university. And we've got, we've got a question here, which I know Alice probably is for you. Um, what, if, what if you don't want to go to university? Um, is there help with applying for, for apprenticeships? Absolutely. So we do one-to-one -one careers appointments with every single student who's indicated that they prefer to look for an apprenticeship or find employment. Um, obviously, first of all, to find out what it is that you want to do, um, and then to establish an action plan of what you then need to go and do. We have a, a, an awful lot of initiatives that we run throughout the first year, which could help you improve your employability skills. So we do a lot of stuff around that with students, particularly who are looking um, for employment. We give you access to a specialist bit of software called Global Bridge, which is like a virtual CV or kind of like um, a student's version of LinkedIn. Um, and that's a great way of you really enhancing your profile. You can share that profile with employers. We organise work experience for students who are wanting to go into employment and we also um, do a lot of support around um, advertising vacancies as well. So we actually have a, like a virtual classroom, um, just like you would for your subjects, but for um, just apprenticeship vacancies basically, so we promote vacancies internally as well. And we do actually get quite a lot of employers who will approach us with particularly more of those sort of higher quality apprenticeships because they know that a-level students are particularly good students and that they'll probably cope very well in a professional environment. So we actually do get some um, exclusive vacancies just advertised through the college only. Um, so there's quite a lot of work that we do on a one-to-one -one basis, but there's also all these sort of support systems and pieces of software in place as well to help you. Thanks, Alice. Um, there's a question here um, uh, that we often get actually <coughs> enrollment. Um, uh, and I think possibly one of the guidance directors would be well placed to answer this. Must all students study three A-levels? Um, Caroline, do you want to, to take that one? Uh, yes. So um, the majority of our students, yes, they, 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 they take three A-levels. Um, sort of a number of reasons, really. It can add um, sort of breadth. Um, to, to, to sort of their learning. Um, obviously, as Al said, we offer sort of 40 subjects. Um, it can be quite a, a challenge, quite a task to sort of narrow that down to sort of three subjects. But studying three subjects, as I say, you'll get breadth of knowledge, breadth of understanding, and also kind of breadth of skills, really. You'll find that some of the skills that you pick up perhaps in one subject that are transferable to another subject. Um, you might feel that you want to sort of study subjects that, uh, as Alice had said previously, sort of, you know, kind of really work towards your strengths. Um, and in terms of that progression uh, onto university, you know, predominantly universities will make an offer to a young person based on their results coming from three A-levels. Um, in terms of sort of the what the week looks like for our students studying sort of um, three A-levels, they'll do sort of um, five hours in, in each subject and that's contact time um, with their classroom teacher. And then the expectation is that they um, mirror that time in, in their own sort of study time. So they'll, they'll also hopefully spend five hours sort of working outside of the classroom um, on sort of independent study, homework, coursework. Um, so it, it, it's about sort of, you know, as Marianne had said, in terms of looking at what we have to offer and just sort of starting to think now in terms of, you know, what subjects 
um, you know, a student would be interested in taking. But the majority of students that we enrol uh, at QE will do three subjects to keep options open, have that sort of breadth in terms of their curriculum and ensure that they build up very strong um, sort of transferable skills and life skills as well. Thanks, Caroline. I mean, a very small number of our students um, for, for something. Um, that tends to be students who are doing further maths with, uh, with maybe uh, two other subjects alongside. But yeah, three, as we say, is the norm and, and the gold standard and then keep, keep most of your options, uh, you know, the most options open to you. Right, there's one question here, which is probably designed, let's see if this is a, a test for our, uh, our careers advisor here. Um, what uh, what A-levels do I need, Alice, for archaeology, presumably meaning an archaeology degree? Our work experience coordinator has an archaeology degree, I think, doesn't she? But anyway, she's not here. Alice is. I'm sure Alice knows. There's actually different types of archaeology degrees, so don't try and catch me out, because uh, there is actually uh, uh, forensic and um, bioarchaeology. You can actually do bioarchaeology at York, so obviously a science is useful for that one. However, most archaeology degrees would like you to have history. Um, that's a really useful subject to have for that particular area. But some have more of a sciencey spin than others. So it depends on the course, because you can do a Bachelor of Arts in archaeology or a Bachelor of Science. Obviously, the science is going to have more science involved in it. So potentially something like maths, maybe even um, things like computer science or IT might be good because you're going to be using some technology for some of those courses. But for the vast majority of the humanities based archaeology courses, um, history is a really, really good one to study, um, although not always a requirement. So some, some recommendations, but you can find a way into archaeology with almost any combination, presumably. And that's the case for lots of degrees. Um, we've got a question here, um, which, which is about um, SEN and learning support. Now, um, we, we do have a learning support team and, and a SENCO um, that, that they're not represented in this particular session, but I work with those with that team. So if I can give a, a brief a brief answer to, to Jodie's question about SEN. I mean, the short answer is if, if, if a student has had um, support with, with, with SEN needs at, at school, we replicate that here. Um, I mean, obviously, if a student has an education uh, or healthcare plan, then we make sure that that, that, that plan is, is, is upheld here. Um, if a student has had particular access arrangements around exams, we, we find that out right at the beginning in the application process and we make sure that those same arrangements are put in place. We do have a team of learning support staff who you know, work closely with students individually and in normal times um, in the classroom as well. Um, so you know, the key thing is we will, we will ask at the application process, we will talk to students and their parents uh, during the enrollment process, we will get transition information from schools to add to the information you give us, and we will make sure that you, know, you get at least the same quality of support for SEN uh, here as, 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 as you do at school. Um, but do, do contact us directly to ask about SEN. You know, you can always contact the college by, by email or, or call the, the college number and one of our team or our SENCO will have a, a good chat with you about, uh, about students' needs there. Okay, I think we have two minutes left. So in two minutes, what support is there for a student who's upset or anxious at college? Who do they go to speak with? Um, lots of different answers here because there's lots of people that can help. Um, Lucy, do you want to, 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 to maybe say a little bit about, about that? Yeah, so, absolutely. I would say probably nine times out of 10, a student would come to their progress tutor. Um, like I kind of ex tried to explain earlier, we are your point of contact, your advocate in college to help and support you. So I would say generally, I think Emma would probably agree that students go to their progress tutor with any concerns that they have, whether that be something that's going on within college or something going on without college. So if you were anxious or upset, you know, as a tutor, I would hope that you would feel comfortable coming to me, being able to talk to me. We're available the whole day throughout college. You know, we're not held away in an office somewhere. We're very open. We're accessible um, as are the guidance directors. You know, Know, if we would be if we were in a lesson for example you could email us you can contact us in lots of different ways so I think if you were anxious or upset you would make your way to us however you could whether that be emailing us and saying Lucy you know I'm not great at the moment and then I could come to you or you, you could come and find us um, and, and get in touch with us that way but like I said we're very accessible in college you know you see as I think one of the questions was how much contact time you have with us officially two and a half hours a week 
So one one hour lesson and one one and a half hour lesson, but that tends to be, um, that's when we deliver all of our information to you, but you can contact us at any point in the day, um, either in person, via email or phone if you need to. Um, we don't restrict you to those two and a half hours. Thanks, Lucy. And that, that seems perfectly timed because I think we managed to get through uh, all your questions there and we've just hit half past eight. So um, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've got uh, some sense of, uh, of what we do and our commitment to, to helping students more generally beyond the classroom. Um, as I said earlier, do make sure you contact us directly with questions if you have any uh, that, that, that weren't answered tonight. Uh, been really good to be with you. Looking forward to meeting you for real and in person at some point over the next year. Thanks to the panellists and thanks very much for you, those of you who joined us.